If there's anything you should take away from this video, it's that an EMP is not your friend. It's not your iPhone's friend. It will cause damage. It may look like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, but do not put your iPhone next to an EMP because this is what's gonna happen. Let's have some fun with science, guys. So you guys know my channel. I like to destroy iPhones once in a while, uh, something creative there, something fun. And this time around, let's take a look at an emp this is an electromagnetic pulse generator so essentially what it does is it sends out a bunch of energy waves and when your phone gets next to it it goes crazy i mean glitches it scrambles the power it does a bunch of weird stuff that it's not supposed to i mean a lot of people believe that the military possesses a very very strong version of this weapon that they can activate and everyone's phones will turn off well this is like on a small scale i just want to show you guys uh, how possible that is and oh my gosh there's so much static everywhere you can almost feel it it's very dangerous okay so let me explain in a nutshell basically you have your you know copper and this is your coil that you're going to send out the energy with i craftily placed a bunch inside of an iphone case that way so we can distribute it evenly sorry um if this is a little bit much but in here what we've got is basically a switch basically takes 3.7 volts and turns them into i believe 700 000. so in a way this is like a homemade taser so if i turn this on this is what's going to happen so there's a little bridge right there between them. So the spark jumps from one connector to this coil over here, and it creates a huge electromagnetic interference over there. All right, so in a nutshell, that's how it works. And now let me show you what it does. So this is just kind of like a burner down here. I'm gonna have a Game Boy Color, and I'm sorry for the noise, it's very, very loud. Check this out. It just resets it. So as you can see, the energy disrupts the Game Boy, goes crazy, even turns off and turns back on. Let's try the Nokia 3310 here. And let's just go ahead and try this on every iPhone ever made, a bunch of stuff, because it interacts with different electronics differently. I was playing around with it. It's so entertaining. Anyways, let's power this on. So the screen does flicker, but it doesn't turn off. Now, I do have a higher power version over here. This one I kind of jerry-rigged together, so excuse, uh, it's falling apart. And these things are scary. I've shocked myself several times. Oh my gosh, I don't want to do that, so I'm wearing electric-proof gloves. All right, Nokia. Oh, it did, it did turn off. There we go. Look at that. So that's a little proof of concept, but you guys can see it does work. It does turn off a Nokia, it does turn off a Game Boy. Now, how about modern electronics? All right, so here's a iPhone 6 logic board, and you'll notice that it has these metal plates front and back. This basically prevents magnetic interference, electromagnetic interference. It's called the EMI shielding for a reason. So that must mean that these phones are definitely more resistant to this kind of stuff, but let's start with something old, the iPhone. 2G, the original iPhone. Let's see how this fares uh, compared to this. So setting it on the pad, and then I'm gonna make a little EMP sandwich and put it on top if it doesn't kill it right away. But zoom in here and uh, turn it on. Nothing really, so. Oh. Whoa. All right, so it looks like the 2G is pretty resistant to this. Nothing really happened. This isn't from this, this is just damage, but it's still working. I tried it in some more modern phones. Instantly, you see that stuff starts going wrong. So let's try a 3G here. All right, looks like nothing really permanent either. Looking good. Um, before, when I did this, it actually had a lot of lines in the screen that kind of didn't go away. All right, so stepping up to a 3GS. I don't know of any EMI differences between these, but for some reason, the older phones seem very resistant, which is kind of impressive. All right, still looking good. I'm very surprised. 
All right, but you know, quickly goes back to normal as soon as the interference is gone. So that's the older phones. Let's step up to something a little bit more modern, the iPhone 4. Activating it. Whoa. And it just made the phone force reset for no reason. The screen just washed out. Oh, it's still, oh, whoa, that was kind of crazy. Did you see that? It like made the whole thing go crazy. All right, so the iPhone 4 was affected. It had this really weird effect. So that's the first iPhone that I'm really starting to see an effect on. Going to the 4S, I'm expecting a pretty similar result here. No, the 4S does not seem affected. So moving on to the iPhone 5. All right, no, I do not want a software update unless it protects against EMPs. Whoa, you see that? Starts going crazy here. Whoa. Holy crap. I don't know what's going on, but the whole thing just washed out. Whoa, but wow, that is kind of cool. <laughs> so we've got this really, really crazy ghost effect. Ooh, whoa. That's actually a sick wallpaper. I like how it blends into the background. Oh, wow, okay, there we go. So it looks like I permanently embedded it in the screen, but turning it off and on, it's kind of refreshing the pixels, making it better. So, wow, that's crazy. So permanent pattern in there from the EMP on the iPhone 5. So starting with the 4, I can notice it's starting to have more of an effect on these phones. So the iPhone 5 has some scarring. Let's move on to the iPhone 5C. Whoa, same thing. Oh, whoa, there we go. <laughs> Just kidding. So we just got it. It's got a cool patina going RGB over here. That is neat. This thing actually makes some really cool wallpapers for your phone. So iPhone 5C. Oh, back to normal. Wow. So this thing really messes with the LCD somehow. Cool. All right. To the 5S. So this one is a bit messed up from before, just so you guys know, uh, but still working. Whoa, trippy. So the weird thing is this 5S isn't as affected as this one. I did this, uh, the case mod with the jet black for this one. And when I put this one on here, it goes absolutely crazy right away. So even some of these same devices have different effects for whatever reason. Whoa, <laughs> that's so cool. Like it works, then it doesn't. Whoa, art. That is so cool. I can hang this up in a museum, modern art right there creating it via destruction. <laughs> Man, this is so entertaining. I could do this for days. All right, one more. Just, uh, this one seems to be really affected. That is so neato. All right, iPhone 6. It is affected, but not like freezing it or anything. All right, so on the iPhone 6, it doesn't seem to be permanent. I can't seem to get it to stay and freeze like the others. Let's try an iPhone 6S here. This is in the uh, shell, but it is an iPhone 6S inside. Oh. Notice how I say they all have like different effects. It's so cool. Some of them uh, screw up in one way, others in others. It's beautiful. Whoa.
That is so beautiful. I love it. All right, so 6S doesn't seem to be permanent. And we've got the iPhone 7. So this one I know is bad for a fact because I was playing around with it last night and it has all these ghost lines that are hard to see, but it really messes with the LCD. Like I would not recommend you guys do this because you'll be using your content and you'll see all these lines from before. And if you take a look, you can see these lines that stay in the display. Those aren't going away. I burned those in, which is really dumb of me. Also, I kept getting messages that my home button was broken or Touch ID wasn't working, so careful. Yup, and the iPhone 7 is super affected by this. Not only does it get damaged, it's the worst uh, out of all the phones I've tested because it's actually permanent on this phone. Like uh, when I turn it off and turn it back on, on most other phones it'll clear up mostly. This leaves ghosting lines that are available forever. You know, they become permanent. So don't do this to your iPhone 7. Um, definitely will affect it. It does make for a very pretty cool and fun effect though. So those are iPhones. I wanna try out a few other devices just because of how much fun I'm having here. Let's try the Mi Mix. All right, set it down on this pad. Whoa. Interesting. <laughs> All right, so not so bad. Doesn't really seem to do any permanent damage, just tweaks the display out. Let's try a phone in a case, see if it can penetrate through that. Whoa, <laughs> look at that. It mirrored the top of the phone to the bottom. Oh, and it works. That's so funny. The funniest glitch I've ever seen actually. Huh. Interesting in the time on here. So that's an iPhone 7, by the way. These seem to be the most affected by this. And what does a Galaxy do? This should technically charge it. Literally no effect on this phone whatsoever. Samsung's got some really good shielding inside of here. Meanwhile, my iPhone 7 is still dying. <laughs> and last one, the Google Pixel. Let's see what Google has under their sleeves or under their EMI shielding. Whoa. I think I just killed it. Was that it? Are you serious? What? Oh, I, it just restarted. Okay. Interesting. All right, so the Google Pixel does a very lovely dance. And it's not permanent, cool. All right guys, so there it is, the EMP Pulse versus the iPhone. Actually one of the coolest videos I've done just because of how much fun it is. It's very dangerous, bad for your phone. Um, yeah, don't do this, but if you do, you'll enjoy it because it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I'll have some really cool videos for you coming this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace.